I love your newly shaved head. <laughs> I I would like very much to get your address so that I can send you a very silly hat. I would. Of you. I would. I have I have a knitted hat that I think would be nice and toasty warm that I made, and it's one of my funny Frankie hats that I make. That's got like. It's a little bit goofy looking. It's it's kind of square on the top and it's got pom-poms on it. And I think you'd look great in it. I love it. I would alternate it with my sleep hat. That's my other hat I wear is my sleep hat. So <laughs> Oh, very nice. I love it. Very nice. This one I think would be fun. I, ho I think you'd get a kick out of it. Oh, wonderful. Excellent. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? We've got Ike here on the show. <laughs> so excited to have you. Good to be here. Yeah. Again, uh, nice. So yeah. I'm I'm Haley. Yes. <laughs> and he's Johnny. And that's Ike. And this is Johnny, Haley, Ike, Day of Fun. <laughs> I can't hear Johnny all of a sudden. What is happening? Is he muted? He is, and I just I'm here. Am now I, I got now we got you. Oh. Zoom no. screwed up your intro. Hey, it's okay. Oh, dude, you got it. You got it. I know. I was going to say, you know what? It'll be kind of a fun little thing that, that we'll just right. keep in. The silliness happens sometimes, and sometimes you got to roll with it. Totally. Right. So I would like to start off the proceedings, actually. Um, I, I know we wanted to talk about uh, Christmas holiday movies. We're in the holiday season and what have you. So we were going to kind of talk favorite Christmas movies with Ike because I... I think it would be a super fun time. We both did. Um, yeah, but I I want to start with, can we please, for a little bit, make some Christmas wish lists that have nothing to do with rational reality? Oh, wow. That is good. Can we can we please? I'm going to start. I would like a AI robot um, like Rosie from the Jetsons to do all of my housework for me. Um, and if she could also... <laughs> If she could also like, you know, take over just like handling the bills, you know, like keeping track of that for me. Like yes. I'll make I'll make the money, but you know, Rosie, can you can you handle the just I don't I don't want to look at it. <laughs> That's great. Johnny, what do you want? I'm gonna I'm gonna do the real American thing and say world peace. Oh, there stop it. Go. I mean, that is <laughs> that is absolutely not in alignment with rational reality. So you did follow the parameters That's very true. well there. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Johnny, now I just envision you as Miss America in a crown on a stage in like a fabulous silver dress that I think you could rock. Are you serious? I was going to say, are you doubting me? How dare you? <laughs> That's Johnny could absolutely rock. Johnny, you would yeah. do so well in the swimsuit competition. Yeah. Like I would bring back the I'd bring back the 80s shoulder pads. Those oh. those yeah, those JC I, Perry blouses. Oh yeah. I yeah. see you looking fabulous rocking an 80s dress. <laughs> I do. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So what about you, Ike? Oh, I would I would get a here's what I would get. I would wish for a 1951 Fender uh no caster which is the Telecaster before it was a Telecaster. And okay. I, you know, there's like none of them left or very few. Mm -hmm. And I think they're like $50,000 guitars or something. And let's, I would love one. So let yeah. Santa please <laughs> deliver to all of us. We believe in you, Santa. We'll believe in you if you'll bring us guitars <laughs> right, and sure. AI robots and world peace. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> right? A hundred percent. You know, here's let's go even further into to non-reality. Let's go back in time and get you a brand new 1951 guitar, right? An untouched one. <laughs> Yeah. Like a mint condition, just oh, grand spanking new. And then we can go to like your favorite. Who's your favorite guitarist that in anywhere in time that we could like Bill and Ted face the music, get an autograph on oh, your yeah. guitar? Oh my God. Um, wow. I would say you're probably Neil Young or Sonny Chirac. Those are the <gasps> two that are my favorites. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm would, still very who, sad that Neil Young is not on Spotify. I, I lament. Man. I lament very often that his music is not on Spotify. Yep, it's pretty weird. Yep. Yeah. So who would be on your like Mount Rushmore of influences as far as music? 
Oh wow! You're, you're you're kind of all over the place with music. You you <laughs> venture. I mean, in, in a good way. You venture like Wowza is very different than Out. Yeah. And Strap Hanger is very oh. different than all of them. Yeah. I like I like that though. You have a like there is a very wide range of bands and and projects that yeah. I love the variety. It's exciting. So I mean, Thanks. Deborah Turner hammered that in there somewhere. Let's, <laughs> where, what is your Mount Rushmore for? Let's, let's hear it. Um, I mean, you know, Neil Young, Sonny Chirac, um, okay. uh, uh, PJ Harvey is an incredible guitar player. Okay. I wish she would play more on her records. A guy named Andy Cohen is he was in a band called Silkworm and he's yep. really amazing as well. Um, mm -hmm. A woman named Talia Zadek. She was in a band called Come that and she's an incredible guitar player. Oh, and a guy named Chris Brokaw, too. He was also in that band. So yeah, yeah. Like, I think yeah. you can have as many faces on right. your Mount Rushmore as you want. <laughs> it's all good. You absolutely it's can. Be smaller this head. is no, we are do we don't we're not doing rational reality. It's just a bigger mountain. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, that's great. That's what I just you get. Got, <laughs> yeah. I just got done. Literally ran here right when I got done and then ran to my office and hit, you know, you know, enter. Oh, and, fabulous. Um, <laughs> we so appreciate you coming from class. Oh, great. And I was lecturing tonight about um Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and the birth of heavy metal. You know, oh, I, I know it. yeah. Oh, how fun. Yeah. What? Oh. How do so I audit do you... your class? Oh my gosh, that sounds right. like the best time. Yeah. I so, love it. So how do you uh how did you come down to the the big debate on who started heavy metal with was it rainbow and deep purple? Uh ra deep purple rainbow. I mean, I think that to, to me, I think that blue cheer kind of has the edge okay. on them too, because they made such crazy overdriven. Their songs were like okay. blown out, like completely crazy and, and over the top sound. So I, I feel like we need to start like just a full other podcast where you do like musical education with us, <laughs> you sure. know, like music appreciation class with Ike. Oh, you know, you <laughs> like we need to legit have like a once a month. We need to have music appreciation oh, with Ike and Johnny. I think we need sweet. to. Well, well, I like talking music with Johnny, so that that's all oh, that's great. Daily, so no, I feel like there's a lot that I could learn. I've I've been so John and I have been listening to albums back and forth, um, and you know things that maybe we weren't familiar with, uh, uh, like things he likes mm -hmm. and back and forth. And it's fun. It's fun to like hear new things and get new, you know, different perspectives on on new music. It's it's been really fun for me. So I think that would be great. We could have yeah. like a little music appreciation time with Ike. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember I did. Uh, we did an episode on like favorite music and stuff like that. And I remember one of my favorite albums was like an earlier. Or, well, I mean, not early, but like in the 90s. Presidents of the United States of America, self-titled. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. one of my favorite albums ever. Yeah. Just because with a guy that plays a guitar with three strings and yeah. a guy that plays a bass with two strings yeah. and a drummer that only uses splash cymbals. It's, yeah. <laughs> and they and their, their philosophy is they write children's music for adults. Yep. And you know what? It worked. Yeah. That vibe, that vibe does work though. Children's music for adults. When you said that, I was like, yes, that is absolutely it's, that album. Perfect. It's bizarre how much it that took off. You know what I mean? Like, because in in reality, There's... it was kind of in a, in a life of its own. Like, it shouldn't have even been touched by a lot of genres, but everyone dug it. So it's like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was <laughs> it filled an interesting niche in there. At when that, I remember when that record came out. The first yeah. one, and it was the song Peaches, I think, was the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Like, whoa, what's going on? And it did feel mm -hmm. an interesting niche in that they were from Seattle. They were, yep. you know, ostensibly, you know, a rock band, that type of thing. But they were not serious like all those other Seattle bands, you know, like they were not yeah. like going, or whatever, yeah. you know, or the. I, their, the ridiculousness <laughs> yeah. of Absolutely. their of their lyrics is something that I enjoy so very much. Like I just telling Johnny, listen to the song Bow Weevil and just my brain going, what? Yeah. Like, yeah. Excuse me. What yeah. did they say? Like, and I love having moments like that when I listen to music yeah. where I just giggle and I'm like, they just said what now? Yeah. And you know, it, interesting thing. Um, the, the lead singer dude, I'm sorry. I can't remember his name right now, but yeah, I can't. Yeah. His, 
His sister is a very well-known writer and wrote a book last year called oh. um, Men Behaving Badly. And it was about <laughs> um, misogyny in the arts. And it's really interesting, like to kind of, you know, I know I know that band from Widak Win or whatever, you know, yeah, but exactly. like, like, holy crap, his sister produced this incredible book too. I had, I had some problems with the book at times, not on the premise of the book, but on the way in which it unfolded and stuff. But it's a really great book about art and like scummy dudes who are hard to root for, you know, <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. sure. Christopher sure. Balu, Balu, Balu. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yep. I don't know if I'm saying that right. The lead yep. singer. Yeah. That is really cool. Yeah. Johnny, get get rock and be a musician. I'll be the writer and I'll come up there with some go. brilliant stuff. I, you know, I'm going to write more silly things that are fun, but whatever. <laughs> but that is important. To, I, you know, I'm about that kind of stuff. And it's I appreciate the people who get into the sort of telling those stories and that narrative and kind of exposing that stuff. I, you know, it yeah. is an important thing. Uh, to to recognize those things, I think that happens, you know, yeah. in comedy and stuff like. I mean, anywhere mm -hmm. that you are in in creative, in the creative world, right? Absolutely, we're, yeah. We're finally yeah. getting yeah. everybody on a more level playing field, which is good. Totally, yeah. totally, yeah. So. Because we play best when we play together. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. that's how it should be. Of course, yeah. Right on. So. I Oh, go right. ahead. No, I was, I was just going to say, I have one, one cool, more music question as far as just a one answer music question. What are your musical guilty pleasures? What, what do not, what do people not really know that's like in your iPod or whatever? Or not iPod. I mean, it's not 2002, but uh, <laughs> um, you can have an Spotify. iPod if you want. Like, like hey, what comes up on your Spotify that people would not see you listening to? Here's, here's what I like to say. There's what iPods? They both oh work. my God. Look at you. <laughs> you have, you legit have two iPods. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. Where do you even get chargers for those things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure somebody's making them. Oh, totally. That, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Wow. I. You know what? That's such a. I mean, I should have an answer immediately because of how much yeah. music I consume and as part of my job. Yeah. Everything. I think the older I get, the less I recognize that it's a that that people that people still you know do, you know judge things. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, you know. I really like, uh, I'll, I mean, this is, I don't think this is a guilty pleasure at all. I think this band rules. Okay. I really like Tool. I like that band. I know that there's, yeah, sure. you know, I think that they are. We need to listen to a Tool album and talk about that, please. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. There's a I lot of people. In I forgot things. about Tool. I love it when people remind me of, and I'm like, oh, I can see the album that I used to have in high school, like the CD in my CD case with the album, like, you know, they used yeah. to have the little book in there. Yep. Totally. Man, yeah. I want how old are kids that don't know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Is I don't know if I want to think do your students know what CDs are? Um, I think they do, but I don't I mean I I'm I and I think they know what these things are for sure. I don't know how many of them still buy or listen to CDs. I'm very, very few. Mm -hmm. Um ma many, many, many more students nowadays listen to um if they're buying a physical product, they're listening to records. Yeah, yeah. vinyls are coming back and very yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Guilty. Yeah, <laughs> Johnny Boy over there is no, like I'd be shopping. You, well, you, you just I know. Yeah, it's, you oh, cool. one coming in the mail too. So <laughs> Yeah, nice. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. And, and and to be and and just to like kind of correct the pronunciation of the band. How do you pronounce that band? Oh, a seethe. A seethe. Okay. A seethe. Yeah, they're a band but, from Iowa. They're from um the Quad Cities area in Iowa. Oh, cool. Although I think the bass player is in Iowa City, and uh, we've played with them before. And then I have watched the guitar player do his solo project a few times. And I really, really love them. They're super heavy. I think that the drummer in a seed, I think his snare drum sounds like Tool. Like I, okay. I, I, oh, okay. I even told him that after a set. I was like, "Man, he's, your snare sounds like you know, like and and I don't know if he would take that as a compliment or not, but it was, like, <laughs> you know, 
it was re- that's a really great record there that's a little heavier than the music i listen to most of the time mm-hmm. but it reminds me of why i do like heavy music you know what i mean yeah that's i john so john and i when we started doing album reviews and stuff the the some some of the music i was picking was kind of tool era a little bit and very yeah. like and i would call it my teen angst music it's like yeah. ang- angsty teen Haley who wants to be mad mm-hmm. at the world this is my music right now <laughs> yeah. absolutely Totally. Like, I mean, when I was in high school, also, I listened to a lot heavier stuff, and I still listen to it here and there. Like, I listen to a lot of like black metal and stuff like that in high school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, it's still in my Spotify rotation. I won't turn it off, but it's just. Listen, I don't know. I, this would I, be it, a fun thing, too, to just scroll a little bit through our favorite slight oh, yeah. songs on Spotify uh-huh. and just. I have got like Rob Zombie next to Madonna next right. to like instrumental piano music. Like right. it makes no sense whatsoever. Totally. Well, like back to guilty pleasures. Like, yeah, one of my guilty pleasures in music is I love um, like 80s new wave. Yeah. Like that kind of oh. stuff. And then and then let's, second, let's I love, do some like, 80s disco. new wave. I oh. love disco like like Boney M. Do you know who yeah. that is? Yep, I totally. love that kind of music. Like it's kind Johnny, of ghetto-ish. We all need but, to like, meet up at a roller rink and get some <laughs> disco and some eighties new wave and dress sure, up sure. like and dress the part. Yeah, like mix it up because yeah. they kind of think I think work together, right? Yeah, I think you can sure. mix those styles and just yeah. rollerblade and have some awesome nachos. I yeah. think that would be sure. great. For sure. Well, it's even in that yeah. song, you know, uh, "Good Times" by Chic. Good times. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the song that in the song mm-hmm. it's 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 like roller skates. You know, like they know oh, that they yeah. knew what they were making a soundtrack to. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's it, perfect. Yeah, that song goes on to become the backing track for you know the first um, codified hip hop song by Sugar Hill Gang, right? You know, uh, yeah. "Rappers Delight" by Sugar Hill Gang. So it's a cool. Mm-hmm. Kind of like you're Haley, wow. you're, you're right in the in the bullseye there for like setting the scene, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. I'm for I'm sure. just like I'm, I'm so very impressed with like the the breadth of your music knowledge and like just oh. pull, like there's things that I'm hearing that I'm like I gotta go back into all my music and re and revisit. These are things that I haven't cool. thought of in yeah. such, and such a a broad variety. I love it. You can go. Oh. You can do heavy metal and hip hop. I that's fantastic that yeah. is well, that fits well, my mean, vibe so well yeah well i mean i mean and then living in a small town sometimes in the especially in the winter yeah it's really all you have to do you can watch tv or you can listen to an album yeah we i mean you know i would live for um i mean the house that that i think your your mom lived in was next to us for a little bit there yeah you know? right next to it um, I would live for walking down the street and opening up the mailbox that was at the corner there. Yep. Whenever a new spin or Rolling Stone magazine would arrive, that was oh. like a lifeline for me. You know, yep. this is of course 1990, 91, 92. No, I was gonna say I used to have like magazine subscriptions and stuff too, and like it was yeah. like it's such a like there's your entertainment, mm-hmm. and you know it's kind of funny to think too, like when John said that the thing that I thought of is you know growing up in a rural area if you're gonna go to movies to a mall to whatever like you have to drive an hour and a half two hours what are you gonna do on the ride you're gonna sit there with your headset on right and listen to your headphones while mom's driving or whoever or Mm -hmm. you're gonna have music on like you listen to new albums like i remember that was how you you pass the time in the car you buy a new album and you listen to the album on the drive I remember like a trip to Bismarck to go to. I remember was it Sam Goody in the Kirkwood Mall? It was Musicland or Sam Goody. I don't remember, but yeah, yeah. one of those two. But that was a big deal. I mean, yes. I was walking coming home with oh. about three albums, and it wasn't like yeah. we, we, that was pre-internet. Like not, I mean, internet was there. We just yeah. didn't. Have no, it. I mean, you know I mean, no, yeah, you didn't have computers. It you, wasn't on a cell phone in your hand. Yeah. You had to like, you know, you, know, you, you had, you had to. No, and you yeah, and, them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you would, you know, you would. It was like if you got a haul of three or four new CDs and you had, and you got like a car ride to listen to it, like, hell yeah. yeah, I'm still down to do that. Like, I want a road trip and just listen to new music. It was such a roll of the dice back then, too. Like, yep. you know, like Johnny was saying, like, you go there, you, you know, CDs were expensive. You'd have to pay yeah. 15 or 16 bucks. 
And yep. if you if if it didn't have my my line back then was if it has four good songs, then that was good. Then I'm like, okay, great. Yeah. But if there was yeah. only one song that you liked and the rest of it was crappy, I would just be so bummed out. Yeah. Then, yeah. You would also though, the other thing which I, I kind of miss, I don't my attention span isn't what it used to be. But no, no. maybe like back then, if you paid money for it like that and you put the CD on and you didn't like it right away, you had to give it a few times. You know what I mean? Like you had to play that record a few times before yeah. you're like, oh, wait a second. Now I dig it. I understand what, it, why, you know, or if it was a difficult album or something, you know? Yeah. I used to, yeah. I would always, so what I used to do was I'd listen to it and have like, cause the booklets would have like the lyrics. Yeah. So I would listen to it and read the lyrics. And like, if mm -hmm. I caught a vibe with the lyrics, right? Like that was kind of, that's, that's been like where I really connect with music a lot of times is with mm -hmm. lyrics. Like I do like, instrumental music and things like that too but that's the thing i would do is like always get the booklet out and like i'd be you know yeah. in the lyrics trying to decipher the message kind of thing and you know mm -hmm. in like I, in, oh go ahead sorry no, no go for it i was gonna say and like back in that day an album cover meant a lot oh, yeah. because if you didn't know that name or whatever you're flipping through you'll see an image and you'll think, oh, that's cool. And then you'll start looking at it. And then you'll consider oh, buying. Like that's why I bought an day, audio slave album. Yeah. Before before their stuff yep. was on uh before it was like on the radio and stuff. I yep. it was like a new album that was out when I was shopping. And I think mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh God, this is just kind of fun for me to imagine <laughs> being in the CD stores and fi like yeah. flipping through the albums and looking for yeah. So I'm pretty sure I got uh Audio Slave, and I want to say probably uh, a Matchbox 20 at the same time. Yeah. And I can see that the Audio Slave album cover with like that 3D flame art on it that I, mm -hmm. that made me pick it out. That's why I bought yep. the first Rage Against the Machine tape. It was the same exact thing. I was in the store. Yep. Oh, no, CD. It was a CD, not a tape. Yeah. And it's had the cover of that um, that Vietnamese monk, the Buddhist yep. monk, who had self-emulated. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't believe, like, oh my God, what that is they, going they could on put here, that you know? on, yeah, nope. stuff that's just in the mall. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was, I mean, and then like the first time listening to that CD, I was like, this is nuts. You know, this <laughs> is, yeah. I, I had known speed metal and I hung out with, you know, those couple dudes that are older than me that was like stoner dudes who would listen to Slayer and Metallica mm -hmm. and Death. And yeah, mm -hmm. I will, I will, I will refrain from saying their names here, but they were good <laughs> dudes. I really, really loved hanging out with those guys. <laughs> For yeah. sure. Well, like Aaron Boji and, and Eric Larson and those guys. And, yeah. you know, those, then I, so I knew about speed metal. I knew about heavy, heavy stuff. But then this was oh, yeah. a totally different way. It was just like, what the hell is going on here? You know? Mm -hmm. so. Oh, you know, what came up on my Spotify the other day that I, that was, cause sometimes you can do that smart shuffle, right? Where it picks songs based on your liked songs. Yeah. And my liked songs are so all over the place. Right. And I get, yeah. but Chop Suey by System of a Down came on. And I was, I yep. just went, <laughs> Yeah. I forgot that I like this song. Why is this not on my like list? Is it it doesn't belong right next to you know yeah. what's her name? Carly Jepsen, call me maybe, but oh yeah, whatever. I don't care. It all goes on the like song list. Yeah, yeah, and then but like yeah, just walking through, or and then back back what you were saying, like the the monk that was setting himself yeah. on fire, or whatever you know. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a band. I think it was the guy from. Do you remember a band? Sepultura, absolutely. Okay, yeah, Brazil, yeah. Brazilian metal band, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was, sounds uh, fun. We gotta yeah. listen to that. Yeah, for totally. But um, I think it was the lead singer. He was in another band. I think it was called Nail Bomb. Oh, and Soulfly. they had. Yeah, well, he was in Soulfly, and um, there was another one called Nail Bomb. And I remember their album was the uh, what was that massacre? That was done the by the U.S. troops in Melee. Uh, the Melee yep. Massacre. It was or the, Melee, M16, Melee. the M16 to that lady's head. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> you see that flipping through albums yeah. as a that kid. And you're like, what the fuck is going yeah. on? <laughs> totally. Those, yeah. It, it was a totally different time. I was going to say, and now really kids have up. the internet and they can find so yeah. many awful things. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it, but, I don't know. I guess that's one of those 
John and I were talking about that with like AI stuff. It's like, it kind of just yeah. depends on what you focus on, I guess. Well, you know, that's yeah. kind of the, it's interesting now that you have an algorithm that tells you what your vibe is, right? But it, yeah. We used but to like have to go out to Martell's scrapyard to, to go into old cars to yep. find uh, the dirty magazines. So, you know, that was. Oh the- my <laughs> God, that's hilarious. That is Fantastic. great. Fantastic. I, that is, I, I did not see that coming. I was like yeah. getting into the old we, car scraps right. for. We ah. didn't either. <laughs> so <laughs> <old> <laughs> put <them> there. <laughs> I would, I both, that is so I, would, great. I would both love to know who, who did that, who put them there. <laughs> so I don't want to know who put them there, you know? <laughs> right. If, listen, when you say that, I thought my dad's the kind of guy that would have been like, this is funny. <laughs> Somebody's gonna find these and it's gonna be hilarious. I bet yeah. some bunch of teenagers will find them and it's and he would just giggle to himself yes. about <laughs> and tell sure. no one is exactly what he would do. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I love well, it. Like what um as far would, as like playing music in the Dakotas and stuff, I want to hear like what is some crazy tour stories. Oh boy. Well, you know, that's really funny. You you ask. Last night, um, I played a show. I'm sorry, Monday night, I played a show in, in Kalamazoo here, and we played with a North Dakota band and okay. a band called Vanity Plate. Okay. Yep. That's They're, appropriate for North Dakota. I've heard of them. Yeah. They play in Grand Forks a lot, I think, at um oh, uh, is it, yeah, the record place yep. or and then the yeah. hot dog place. Is that hot the dog, same yeah. place? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. And there, it was so great to see, it was so great to hang out with some North Dakotans because, yeah. you know, there's just stuff you don't have to explain, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how to say it. There's just stuff that I don't have to like get into the granular detail of like, well, what I mean by this is, this is like, no, they totally knew it, you know? Yeah. So they, we were talking about, we were, you know, every, at the end of the show, we, we went out to a different bar and they got a pizza and we were just hanging out and we were just talking, we were, you know, just talking. And I remembered the biggest show, like the, the most the craziest biggest show I ever played in North Dakota was at the Midtowner in Mandan, North Dakota. Um, yeah. And it was uh, with a band of mine back then called Emoplex G. And we didn't have any words. It was instrumental music. Okay. That's a very fun name. Yeah. <laughs> and it was crazy. I think it was like five or six bands. It was in the the basement of the Midtowner. I swear to God, it felt like there was like 400 people there. I mean, it was just... Okay bananas everybody was around us when we were playing and it was so hot like uh oh yeah crazy and and people were like hitting me in the head when we were playing and stuff and at one point that's like, messed up i like gra- you know i like, grab a drink of water because i'm like dying i was playing drums <laughs> and this guy is right there and he said hey can i have some water and i said oh man i've got hepatitis and i said it as a joke and he said why <laughs> And he oh like, my oh, god <laughs> oh, okay and, and he did have hepatitis <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, how fun that's great and then you know i mean i played so many shows you know there's been there's just so many crazy crazy you know crazy stories but also a lot of you know playing a lot of shows on the road and stuff back then i haven't i mean i still play a little bit i mean i played quite a bit recently here yeah because we had some projects that we wanted to play out and stuff like that but yep. back in the day you know a lot of it is just so mundane too you know most of your day is you're all right, we're driving here, we're gonna get some food, we gotta use the bathroom, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. And then yeah. like waiting around for the 40 minutes where you can play and get nuts. And then after that, it's like, well, where are we sleeping? What are we doing? What are we doing? Yep. This guy snores, this guy's drinks too much. You know, this guy's, you know, uh gonna talk about conspiracy theories until he falls asleep or whatever. You know? <laughs> until he falls asleep, not until you fall asleep. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but again, I wouldn't trade it. For anything i i to yeah. say, i really value that time because i've been really lucky to play music with people that are my friends you know like that's so that great with anyway you know like and that's i think that's really great and that's kind of what i love about doing these interview podcasts you know that we've been doing more often now is you do get to meet like-minded people and have just you know like i've been so looking forward to this all day i had a hell of a day oh, Wednesday it was not great to me today i have to say oh. so like i was just so looking forward to talking to my high vibe and good people all right and, on. and enjoying some good some good chats with y'all so i do appreciate <laughs> you being here yeah it's For great sure. i'm sorry you had a bad day was it work stuff or oh i just yeah it was it was you know sometimes when you're just like can we is it possible 
for me to go and like request to be put into a medically induced coma and just sleep for a week. <laughs> oh, no. Awesome powers, like, can, bro. Yeah. Can I just do that? Can we just, I just want to exit this human experience for a week and just come back refreshed and be like, okay, let's do this. Yeah. I suppose they probably wouldn't let me do that though. I was going to say my paid vacation's coming up. So nice. Very no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh <just> boy! <laughs> uh, go ahead. There's something in the air today because I had a. Uh, um, I mean, it was it wasn't difficult for me because I was just you know here doing my thing. But a difficult emotional day at at, at work here. I had um, several students who were really having some serious problems and you know were like breaking down and stuff in my office. And there's some energy going. Let me tell yeah, you, because like I've fun. got some other people I've talked to today that same. I don't, I don't know what planetary alignments are off, you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That must be kind of, so, I mean, that's an element of teaching. I suppose it can be difficult if, I mean, I imagine that just cause you are very approachable and easy to talk to, you know, that's maybe something that does that happen to you a lot that I mean, like I assume students are probably comfortable enough to talk to you about things. Yeah, I think so. I don't want to give myself any credit for that because that's, I don't have anything, you know, like you are just what you are, right? You know, like, yeah, yeah. Sure. no, but um, I, I, but, that is great. Yeah. And I think probably, yeah. I mean, music is something that I think people can relate to each other through very easily a lot of times. And I think, you know, being, being into music like you guys, I think that's, there's something in music that I think gets you in touch with like your empathy emotions, right? Yeah. And so, like, I, I'm sure that's mm -hmm. part of it too, is that there's some element of, connectivity that they can sense there which is really cool sorry yeah. that they you know yeah. i'm sorry all the vibes were heavy today i don't know where jupiter's at you know i think a lot of people like here in fargo had a hard time too i think it's just the gloomy entrance of winter i think it's just was people saying bummed, that man. the lack of daylight and i'm i'm feeling that i'm like man there's i and get off of work and it's dark as a ginger i welcome it I welcome it. <laughs> yeah, you daywalker, you. <laughs> hey, the sun and I, we have fights to the death. I can't do it. Did you call him a daywalker? He's, He's a daywalker. All of their strengths oh, and oh, yeah. their weaknesses. Yeah, no, that's, that's right. right. FPF 50, nothing under. <laughs> Johnny's, Johnny's one of the vampires in 30 Days of Night. He's just like, yes, can we please have <laughs> this nighttime? Go away, sunshine. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's hilarious. So I, as well as music, I know you are super into UFC. I have a question. What? Yeah. Oh, Ike is like every fight he watches. Like that's that's probably really. Oh, yeah. All the all the, the early prelims, even. Yeah, I'm a I'm a. Yeah. There's a term. Can you swear on this? I don't want to swear. Yes, Absolutely. we swear. Yeah, we swear. Absolutely. There's a term. I already did. One like small. I was gonna say, did I not drop an f bomb yet? That's <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I did about that. Sometimes. I was yeah. gonna say that's unusual for me. Oh, there you go. Um, there's a term in like a small community of of people who are into mixed martial arts called shit eating wild man. And I <laughs> I would definitely I think qualify as a shit eating wild man. Like I I, I, go, love I it. go to I've seen you know I go to go to them when I can. I've been to the one the UFC two seventeen in Detroit, and I went to a Bellator one in Chicago. Oh, nice. And I'm not a violent person. I actually don't like violence at all, but I watch it every weekend and I watch other promotions too and stuff. Let but, me yeah. tell you what yeah. I am. Johnny knows me, you know, I'm not violent either. I'm not, you know, I'm a little witchy, but I'm a lot love and light and unicorns and rainbows as much <laughs> as right. I can be. Yeah. But like, I love me wrestling. I love <laughs> I love football movies because I like it when they yeah. really like get those hard hits and the great mm -hmm. shot right up in it and, and the music that hits with like, yeah. I dig it. I I would like to learn martial arts and mix right. martial arts myself just to get in it and fight club it just a little bit. Yeah. You know, like well, I there's something remember. like fun about it. Yeah, I remember when I was when I was younger, your dad Haley had um he had those UFC um videotapes, the ones that had like all the pay-per-views or whatever they yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yep. month after or whatever. Yep. Yeah. You could get them at what was that video store? across from the bars in Wishick. It was the old, it was, um, you mean where, the, remember, old, where the old, uh, uh, hardware store was the old true value. I think store. so. Like it had movies 
everywhere. It was oh, the yeah. place that stocked uh, Sinclair's, I think. Yeah. And I would like yeah. I would like to welcome everyone in the audience, the small town corner. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But if you know, you know. You know no, I, mean? no. <laughs> like, but I, I love that because, thing. listen, what? very much like a legit under 5,000 people know. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. That's for that sure. That place. That's the kind of that's... inside baseball we play. Like, it's super inside baseball. <laughs> for, for sure. But at that place, I remember they never advertised any for anything for sale. But you could go in there and you could say, oh, I just want to take a look. And yeah. then you could you could throw down three, four, five movies or whatever, or videotapes, and just be like, what do you have to have for those? You know what I mean? Because they would they would wheel and deal. They would just look on eBay or something. What are, what are they selling for? Yeah. And then, but and I remember they had endless wrestling ufc pay-per-views every one you could think of and i I remember i think your dad went in there and just went ham oh no i'm sure he did i'm sure he did because it was either that or if they had any of those like classics of snl in there that's what you you know oh that's great i was such a wrestling fan too I didn't know what UFC was. Like, I didn't know what Ultimate Fighting was. And the thing that confused me the most was I'm... why aren't they climbing on the ring and jumping on each other? In wrestling? But yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but like, yeah. Why aren't they doing all UFC, the high-flying you know I mean? stuff? Why aren't they jumping off the cage onto each other? I didn't understand it. I was like, where's the flare? Where's Where... the steel? Where are the steel chairs? Excuse me. Right? Yeah. There's no there's no garbage can under the ring that yeah. you can just pull out? That is supposed to be part yeah, of a street right. fight, but looks like you just bought it at Menards today. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, like, what would be your favorite classic UFC fight? What's the best one you've ever seen? Well, wow. The best fight I've ever seen. Holy moly, that's a great question. Like, um, I'm saying probably pre, I don't know, in the last probably like the Stephen Bonner era and stuff like that. Like oh, I would old, say. old ones like that. So I, yeah. I um I didn't get I didn't come along into mixed martial arts okay. until maybe the last uh God maybe last ten years. Um, okay. So I had to go in back and fill all those gaps in, and thank God there's YouTube and UFC Fight Pass, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Oh, I um, yeah, we've loved looking up old wrestling videos, and like I was, you know, old yep. Mike Tyson fights. Oh, he's incredible to watch. I think it's pretty hard to 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 top that. Um, I think it's the is it the second Rory McDonald and Robbie Lawler fight? Yup. And at the end, they're just like they're both have the red mask of death, and like Rory mm-hmm. McDonald's nose has never ever looked yeah. the same again. And you could argue like this, never, yeah. And he's it never been the same again either. He was it, it yeah. like took something out of him. I think the best, maybe it's not my favorite fight, but the okay. Best, the time I felt the most sort of stoked watching a fight was actually one I saw in person. And that okay. was when Francis Ngannou knocked out Alistair Overeem in Detroit, oh, UFC 217. Yeah. That's um, really cool. You got to be there. there. Oh, we, yeah. We, we thought, we thought, I mean, that card is insane. Justin Gaethje was on there. Um, Holloway Aldo. I mean, it was, it was nuts. We thought we saw somebody die in the, in the ring or in the octagon. I was going to say how, how yeah. loud was that? Oh, it was unbelievable. When he, <laughs> you, we were sitting up a ways, not too far, but we were sitting up a ways. You, yeah. could, hear, you could hear it. And oh, then, and yeah, then everything that. just went, and nothing, nobody said anything. It was just quiet. Yeah. Because you really, literally, you thought like, oh, we just witnessed an, a sanctioned murder, you know? Yeah. It made me feel weird for a while. I was like, oh my God. But then, right. you know, it's, it was a knockout, you know? It yeah, was, sure. I never seen anything like that in my life. It was just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, the energy of being in a live event yeah. like that, though, I think, it's part like I I am not someone who pays attention to sports anything, mm-hmm. but if 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 there is a sporting event, I am happy to go because the, yeah. like the vibe and the energy is always just fun. Like I love the atmosphere of it, but like man, when you're sitting there and somebody might have just died, that's nope. intense. It was well, nuts. Yeah, well, I have like I would say I have like two favorite classic fights. I would say Clay Guida. Diego Sanchez. Oh my God, that's a war. That is a war. Yep. Yeah, that was that was one of my favorite fights. Just I love I love Diego Sanchez. Diego Sanchez is great because he has a comedic value to him. That one time when he was yep, and when he was coming out, like when he was coming, of like, course, of course, that's why Johnny walked. That's why Johnny oh, loves him. 
when he was walking towards the octagon to to fight somebody, he would the his opponent was already in the uh, octagon, and he pulls out a cross and he's just holding it up and he's walking to. I loved it. Oh, it's so funny. I appreciate then, people who can have a sense of humor no matter what right. you're doing. Yeah, yeah, I would say it'd be that one and Stefan Bonner, Forrest Griffin. Oh, that's the classic one. That I mean, that's yep. the fight that people say there really wouldn't be the UFC as we know it if it wasn't for that fight. Is that you know what, yeah. John, yeah, that Johnny, was pretty and much why I watch the UFC? Yeah, you yeah. guys need would, to make a yeah. playlist on YouTube, Johnny, on our on our channel of all these fights. The fights? <laughs> yeah, no, you do. Like we make playlists of some of this stuff that we. I just would throw so many, YouTube. so do many it. awesome that, like butterbean. But there would have to be some oh, butterbean in there. Fighting over in Pride. You know, like, what? What's yeah. that? <laughs> My yeah. daughter used to love butterbean. My daughter Millie. Um, she would. Yeah, butterbean is fantastic. She would ask so many questions. She'd be like looking out the window in the car, and she'd be like, "Dad, do you think butterbean could beat up Grandpa Perry?" And I'd be like. <laughs> I don't want to say anything bad about Grandpa Curry, but I think Butterbean could probably take him. Yeah. Oh, no. But that's a great question. Yeah. I, I love it. A tree down with his hands. <laughs> right. Oh, well, there was nothing maybe. like, I mean, there was nothing like two people for boxing, My, Iron Mike Tyson yep. and Butterbean. It, yep. Like, yep. it didn't matter what, like, the people like that watch Butterbean were probably just watching it just for, just to watch this big rotund man yeah, you know so. just knock people out in some ways that's why you watched uh roy nelson yeah totally UFC. absolutely you know i mean because he was just he would rub his belly all the time and like shoot guns and yeah you know, I mean, but roy nelson was a killer he would knock you out like that you know mark I mean? hunt too mark hunt was the same way yep. was a big weird looking dude who yeah. beat the death punch you know so right <laughs> oh my gosh but, uh, now I have to go and watch like old wrestling videos again. I oh, like yeah. just all oh, yeah. the the fight talk. I got I got to. We just you know so, what Haley? We just finished uh my uh one a, a band I play with my my partner Frankie and I. Musical yeah band. hey yeah. Tell, we, got we gotta tell her hey hello. Oh I sure. Oh have. you guys did finish your the one that you were working on. Yeah we just got in fact at work tonight I just got uh the um, a song. The first song mastered back at work. So I have, when I'm done here, I'm going to go home. And actually, two two North Dakota type things. When I was okay. a kid, when I would come home from wrestling or football or track or whatever, and you'd get you'd get home late. When yeah. I would walk in, my mom would say, "Can I fry you a steak?" And like that yeah, was just like fry you a steak. And tonight, when I go home, my my wife had said, "We got some steak. Do you want me to fry you a steak when you get home from dinner?" <laughs> you want me to fry you a steak? I love it because that's just what you do. I, I I love it. Yeah. I am I'm still there. I could never not eat beef. I'm yeah. sorry to all of the vegetarians and vegans out in the world, but like oh man, I love them cows. I pet them. I give them hugs, but they're right. tasty. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. I remember when we lived beside your parents and how much food we would walk over to their house or whatever. <laughs> My mom would always what well because she would cook enough for an army, and there's only four of us. You know yeah. what I mean. So she would always make I love that about your mom. Go, go give it to Debbie and Perry. It's the best. She would, my mom would, and when your mom would do that, I swear to God, my mom would text me and be like, mm -hmm. oh, you guys jealous? Guess what? We do that to each other. When we when oh, we yeah. have, like, when we get to go visit Cindy, we text each other as siblings, mm -hmm. like, we're getting Cindy food and you're oh. not. Yeah. Like, Look at what we're eating. Yeah, yeah. Like with my friends and stuff like that, as soon as if I get if I get cheese buttons that my mom makes, not lazy Ooh. cheese buttons, but actual cheese buttons, which she made today. Oh yeah, yeah. What's she that? Made them today, my mom sent me a picture. She made them today. Yeah, yeah. she oh, has a gosh. German day every week. Oh yeah, they're, they're lethal. They're great. Yeah, but, um, lethal. Uh, but like, just I forgot where I was going with this. The fry you a steak. Friends coming oh. over with cheese buttons. Yeah, yeah, but like I just rub it in hardcore. I declare total war when I get cheese buttons. Like it, it's all. Oh, if you're not around, you missed it. That's all I have to say. I'll send you videos of me just slamming it in my fat <laughs> face. Like I don't care. Like I next time it. I go to Wish it, I'm, I'm. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be sending you some pictures. I'm just it. gonna bomb you with photos of me eating the best food oh, yeah. you don't get to have. Mm -hmm. I love that. Then, Cindy put a picture of um. 
you guys were helping her out a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And there, that was such a great picture to see because, hey, you know, she's so stoked to be hanging out with you guys. You could just tell. For sure. That was, was that the one where we were dressed up as superheroes? That, oh, maybe not. No, Do you I remember? think he's talking, or, yeah, there was that one. And then I think he's talking about the, we made breakfast sandwiches for the Halloween thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I love it. It's yep. cooking with Cindy is always fun. And um, it's mm-hmm. one of those things that always makes you feel just a little bit like. I don't want to say she's intimidating, but you're definitely an underling in the kitchen if you're in the kitchen with Cindy. You know well, what I'm saying? You know what I, I mean? mean? Like you are inferior in a kitchen with Cindy, like Gordon oh, Ramsay. Sure. I'm sorry. You can shout and scream and, fa- and be fancy <laughs> all you want, but Cindy yeah. run the kitchen and she's doing it better than you. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. She's what she's she, a wizard. Yeah. She yeah, is. She, she's not the best teacher because she doesn't have patience for it. Cause like, no, cause, but that's that the whole well. thing. I'm living proof. No, that's the whole thing where she'll just be like, no, right. just, I'm going to do it. Just get, Pretty just much. you do this, take this over yeah. there. I'm and doing like, this. Is, this is kind of an impression of my mom when she's trying to teach you how to cook. And I hope she sees this, uh, but it's like, I will uh, make a clip of like, it. No, no. no, it's just like this. She'll, she'll show you what to do. And then she'll watch you do it and just go like this. She'll go, ah, um, uh, and then eventually she'll just say, just let me do it. And then she'll just, <laughs> kick down the I love that. Like, Oh, that is dead to rights. The truth. Were, no, that is. <laughs> and she's, she smiles so nice at you too. When she does it, just, right. yeah, I'll, I'll just do it. That's so great. <laughs> you are not you are not folding in the cheese the oh. right way and you're not oh, yeah. doing it right. I remember I remember on uh when she would make grilled cheese and tomato soup. It was basically me and my brothers just wolfing down tomato soup and grilled cheese. And her behind us basically just uh you know, line just, cook doing everything, just has a you know, have factory line of cheese. No, do you know what? Like in the movie Robots, where you have like a robot with multiple arms doing dishes and stuff. Like mm-hmm. they, it's like she has multiple arms. That's how like she's moving so fast. You know, she just she's yeah. all top of all of it. Yep. Right. So great. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so I do want to let's just let's do a little. We'll end with it, kind of. Or let's shift into Christmas because it is the yeah. holiday season, and I do want to know. Favorite Christmas uh, music and or Christmas movies. What do we got? I love, I love the boss. I do dig Bruce Springsteen Christmas songs. Yeah, I I particularly yeah. love the uh, Merry Christmas Baby Live version. Mm-hmm. I I do love the boss. Yep, that's great. Yeah. Um, in terms of music, um, I don't. You know, I like just sort of normal traditional ones. I don't. There's. I'm I'm into I'm into the scene. I like it. In terms of mm-hmm. movies, I don't know if this is if this is a, a good one to say or not. I'm not sure. I think there was some debate a few years ago. Man, mm-hmm. I love watching Die Hard at Christmas. I, yeah. you know what? Listen, if it takes place at Christmas, it does not have to be about Christmas mm-hmm. because no, I I love the ice harvest. It takes place at Christmas. Yeah. It's you, Billy Bob Thornton and John Cusack and mm-hmm. Oliver Platt. Yep. Oh my God! Just like uh, I love, love, love that movie. I watch it yeah. all the time during Christmas. It so, is not a Christmas movie, but it's a Christmas movie for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I think. I, mean, I would Die Hard say, counts. Die Hard counts. Yeah. Die Hard counts. Yeah, I would say a. Uh, is it a Christmas story? The one that runs twenty four hours. Uh, twenty four hours yeah, yeah. for oh two God. days. I mean, I'll watch it once or twice. I'll nope. watch it definitely once. But like, that's one of my. I like watching that on the holidays, and then like, you, I don't. You don't, I don't have really... to watch it once or twice all in in order in a row, though. Like you can like, watch you know, it once or twice in chunks my, over the course of. Wish it. <laughs> That's on twenty four hours. You just watch it on a loop. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just, yeah, pretty much. But like, as far as like tradi- like tradition movies, I, I don't have too many like Christmas traditions. Like on the Fourth of July, I watch um, The Sandlot. Yeah. Oh, sure. You yeah. Know, stuff like that. Like, I have just weird traditions like that. And then on, on I don't Halloween, know I watch Focus Focus. Why not? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, on 4th of July, I watch The Big Lebowski. Oh, there you go. Great. I don't know yeah. why. I mean, I watch it otherwise because I love it. It's a yeah. great film. Yeah. And Halloween, I always have to watch Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Yeah. Yep. And Christmas, I do watch Ice Harvest, but I also always have to watch Scrooged because Bill Murray is m- like one of my faves. That's a messed yeah. up movie too. That's a real. We watched that last year for the first time with the kids, 
And my my kids were just like, what the hell? Is what did I just watch? <laughs> and, and that was like, that's a favorite movie of mine from childhood. Like yeah. that yeah. was, which says a lot about my personality. When I was like four, five, six years <laughs> old, I was loving on Beetlejuice, Batman and Scrooge. Yeah. Like yeah. that and yeah. And doesn't that just make sense if you if you know me or spend any <laughs> amount of time with me? It's like, yep, sure. that's that makes sense. That's where you come from. Yeah. That does but that like, bit. But as far as like Christmas music for me, it would be like probably Trans Siberian Orchestra. I just like Ooh. that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know I mean, yep. I'm not, I no, would I'm not a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's just cool. I would I like love to to see Trans Siberian Orchestra in yeah. person. I oh. We I must. Remember, we must. I remember, yeah, I remember there was probably eight years in a row where they would play in Grand Forks every year. Yeah. Like, yep. if you wanted to see them, just wait. They're, they're coming. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to. You know what I mean? No, I'm going to put it out into the universe. You, me, I, all of us. Yeah. All three oh, of us great. go to I the Trans Siberian yeah. Orchestra. <laughs> sure. And we like, right. and then we can have a fun little podcast debrief afterwards. <laughs> universe, right. make it happen. Yeah. For sure. It'd be great. And like, Oh, good. I say, well, we can get together over caramel rolls and talk about it. <laughs> For sure. There you go, and it's some nifla soup, yeah. and we'll and we'll talk Absolutely. about the the amazing show we just saw. I'm so excited for that episode. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I do have one more question for you, Ike. Now, when you play guitar, not so much, but when you play drums, you have a lot of an expression coming out of your face. You have a very expressive face when you play drums. Now, I have a question for you. If we were to match you against Albert Collins, do you know who Albert Collins is? The guitar player? Yeah. 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 If we were to match you against him on <laughs> the expressions, the expressions yeah. that they make, yeah, who do you think would win that? Oh, he would win. He's he he probably <laughs> he, you know, I mean, he's a master, right? He's like a, a, a right. master of the form. Uh, but he would probably win. I I I don't reckon I don't realize that I make crazy. Well, that's why it's so great, is yeah. because it, it's involuntary. <laughs> right. And well, it's always Collins. after the show, like when I play drums in bands. Um, like recently I did a, a a short run with a band called New Standards Man. And yeah. At the last show we played, I I kind of cut loose for a little while at on one song and really really went for it, and this really quiet, really nice friend of mine, Brian, came up to me. Actually, he's in Asif. He came up to me. He's like, "Oh man, what was going on there, dude?" Like he was like, <laughs> "Were you like, having a seizure?" <laughs> yeah, like, "Are you okay?" You know, so um, so you don't realize it, but you know, like that's. I That's mean, what happens when you get into a zone. Yeah, you just yeah, go with you know, it. The, the power of music, right? You know, I. Well, yeah, you just feel it. But Albert Collins, I would say that's cocaine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can actually feel good about yourself that that you uh, you you're, you come by your energy naturally. Yeah. No, we, not, yeah, exactly. I, no and, cocaine. No, I have. And yeah. we applaud you. No, for no, that. for sure. Yeah. Two, two cups no. of coffee a day, and that's it. So. Right. <laughs> oh <laughs> man. Jitters. I'm with you though. Like that's all I need to is that like, and then I'm like, okay, no, now we need to meditate and chill out for a little while. Yeah. Like that much caffeine. I need some chill time now. Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, because you have an upcoming, um, you Oh, do you? Some, some, well, you said you were doing some music with your new tongue drum. Yeah. I yep. was just going to ask you, what's the progress on that? Like where, where, musically where are you headed with that are you like excuse me kind of, what's up uh, professor what yes. what what is a tongue drum oh you got oh. it <laughs> um yeah. if well, i, I can show you yeah i was gonna say like i have one right here. I, I am not the hermione granger in this class just sure. so <laughs> just so that everyone's aware it's what is that yeah. thing it's oh. it has all these tongues on it and then Oh, yeah. You know, it's yeah. kind of like I don't know. It's like a meditation. I want one. Yeah, I've seen They're some fantastic. of them that are like this... weird. Yeah, they you look can like a little on, spaceship. I think on Amazon, this was like under fifty bucks. Yeah, it's like they're cheap. They're Dude. great, really cool. Yeah. I've got two of them. Donnie, why are you not making videos of you playing that for me to put on TikTok? Like, why are you I'm not still making... kind of figuring it out? What I why are do? you I... not just banging around and making me some silly chill out music? What are we doing <laughs> I here? Could totally good. Yeah, but I'm still, I'm still kind of trying to figure it out what I want to do with it because I thought about doing like 
meditation music and then maybe throwing oh. like a deep guitar over it or something. Oh, yeah. That Just was funny. experiment with it a little bit. Why have you not told me about this? I have meditations that I am writing right now that I want to put on our no small story. Like, what it, we got to oh, yeah. get. Uh, ah, we yeah, got to well, work on this in my life. I, I, it, I'm, it's, I'm still. Figuring OK, it out. listen, can can I bring it? Can I bring y'all my musical friends in on this and let's put this together and let's put this on the channels. I want yeah. to make a series of. I want to make this series of meditations that is macabre meditations, like meditations for yeah. spooky people. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like my visualizations and guided meditations are like, you know, there's like a black lake, there's a graveyard, like it's all very chill, but it's all very like spooky person oriented because like sure. that's a happy place, kind of like calm situation for me. Yeah. Like imagine yeah. myself in a graveyard here lies yeah, all the fucks that I never, I do not give anymore. Like <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. Like I'm not going to like, I, that's not exactly the wording that I have in the meditation. I have it, you yeah. know, very uh, much yeah. fluffier kind of thing, oh, but really? like, let's yeah. put that together. Some you get the bingy bong things. Oh, for sure. Well, he's, um, I was just asking like, cause I'm, I'm I'm just seeing how your mind works with that. Where does your mind go with the tongue drum? Like, what do you want to add on top of it? Because I was thinking like heavy guitar and maybe I don't even know about yeah. what else. I haven't thought about it yet. But okay, like, but if you were gonna go do it? a spooky meditation, how would you guys collaborate musically? Like Should for real. Oh, I think if, if you, you guys were gonna Get the tongue drums together. What else would you put yeah. with it? I mean, I think if you got Johnny and I in a studio together for a couple of days, we could come up with something pretty awesome, you know? Yeah, we could. Well, yeah. I mean, we've, we've kicked that idea around a few times. Just yeah. fork yeah. out some money for studio time. Just see what we could do. Yeah, but, um, that would some point. No, yeah. that would be great. And like, maybe I can get like somebody who's good at voice acting. We just had a voice actor on our and get someone to read <laughs> cool, the meditations. Yeah. 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 And like, and you guys make the music that goes like, you know, mm -hmm. under under the meditations. I have seven yeah. of them planned out. So I need seven tracks. Yeah, yeah. I think that th that thing could write itself. <laughs> right. I, I would know. Listen, I'm going to work on getting these things written. I have them kind of yeah. outlined and I'm going to send them to both of you. I'm so serious about this. That's cool. Like y'all yeah. got to make some the ukulele spookily like, but chill. Yeah. 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 For sure. Like, you well, know. Like well, I'm, I'm like, about halfway done with an yeah. album that I'm working on right now. I did a whole bunch of stuff. And then I sent all of those tracks to a friend of mine in Canada named Gary, who put saxophone on different things. Oh, okay. I, I start usually with drum drums, like regular drums, and I'll play a beat. And then I'll put the tongue drum parts over the top. And I'll okay. do both uh, mic'd in the room. And then I'll also run my tongue drum through an amplifier with my contact mic on it, you know? Yep. And that's been really fun and really rewarding. I put acoustic guitar over the top of it too, played bass on it, played a little guitar, um, some other kind of uh, xylo or not xylophone, glockenspiel and things like that. Well, I was going to say xylophone or um, what are the big hanging bell things? Yeah, just bells. Chimes, boom, the chime things, you yeah. know, like get some of those rolling in there. And oh, I, I just, just I'm so excited right. about this. I think this yeah. would be so fun. I can't wait to hear whatever you're working on with that right now. Thank you. And also do give us links. If you have links to your new album with Frankie, do oh, let yeah. do send I that think, to us so we can put it in the description. I think that yeah. that will be um, all out and mastered. And then we're actually going to get um, compact discs made of this one. Oh, which fine. Is nice. Wild. We've never, you know, I haven't put a CD out in, yeah, almost 20 years or something you know so yeah I, mean, I usually put out records you know those are yeah really cool. but waiting to get records pressed nowadays is just such a pain you know it's mm -hmm. you know and also like i don't know how many people would buy this album it's it's a yeah. peculiar record in in some ways i had a, a friend listen to it to tell me what he thought i was i was going to use some quotes that some friends wrote and my friend is like uh this is a difficult record dude you know like <laughs> yeah well, well you know what? Yeah. Maybe it's just meant for like a brand new audience. Yeah. You know? yeah, sure. yeah. Well, it seems to be the thing to do in like Fargo with a lot of the bands is they're doing cassette tapes. Yeah. Yep. I have and that's wild are... to me. Like, cause it's like, no, but who... people are doing that now. It's very weird. Yeah. Well, it's, I'm, I'm guessing a cassette tape next to a CD are probably the cheaper ends of printing. Oh, yeah. I'm sure an album, an album takes a lot of, you know, I I'm do sure think that, cool. I think that like, 
may I don't know if you see this with your students, but like, so I have younger siblings that are my younger brother's 21. My youngest sister is 18 mm-hmm. and like, they're both in college, mm-hmm. but like these sort of like going back to the, like back in the day technology, our nineties technology and eighties technology, like is very popular and sort of fascinating to them so like you know things like old school polaroid cameras you know are things like i remember her digging and you know they are into like the cassette tapes and the walkmans and the i i think it's interesting yeah. i think it's really cool and i i think i think it's great that they're keeping that alive to some degree like as yeah. a because it's i think it's just kind of fun to experience like the sound quality or the because di- there is something different about when you have like playing a record has a different sound than if you're listening to a cd oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i but do I think, dig that but i think a lot of it was like wh- what i was saying like how many people will buy this are you thinking you know what i mean so like they'll do a cassette but then the cassettes they'll do them up and like they'll do like a green translucent cassette or something yeah, yeah. you know they'll do something with a little bit of flair to it yeah. but it's all it's it's just more insurance you know what i mean that if you so you don't lose your ass on it no yeah. i get that but i also yeah. just think that that's like really fun i like let's get yeah. more people into buying those things and get more people buying all the weird music that's For you sure. know the, the indie groovy stuff yeah oh if i was a millionaire i would have ike send me an album every day <laughs> <laughs> Well, See, like I universe, you, you heard it here. We need to be millionaires right. so that we can pay Ike to be our music educator. Right. Well, I, like I, I can just like be I like, that's a full time job now. Is just yeah. like <laughs> curating playlists for me and Johnny. That'd yeah. Great. But when like we hit it big, like, we will pay you well to do this. There you yeah, go. like I would, we, I was talking to Haley about this in the past. I was like, when I need new music, even just Spotify or albums, I always go to Ike just because oh. I get. I don't get commercial like big commercial music. I get like I get the more indie stuff, the shit people are putting out, like the small corner pockets of the states. You know what I mean? Just yeah, stuff I would never come across. Uh, that's what I enjoy about it. This is like, what that, we need to do. Of, we like, need to have some of, kind okay. of like YouTube radio show, right? Where yeah. you bring it, like we play like. Uh, you know, I don't know. We'll have an hour or hour and a half long show and you play like, I don't know how many songs and we review these fun new songs. Sure. I don't yeah. know how to do that, cool. but we're going to figure it out and set it up. Yeah. Right. Well, like uh, uh, he showed me an album of a band that I really dig just because the, they're almost like they're like a punk band, but they almost have like an industrial sound that they when they recorded. But that band out of Denver, Moon Pussy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. Red, man. they're awesome. It's a great it's a what great, a great name. name. Yeah. I was going to say my hat's off to them because they they sent me uh, a handwritten note with my album. So oh. they must write they write personal notes to every yeah. album. So that's a nice little nice that's talk. But that's super fun. I yeah, love that. Cool. Yeah. They're really really good people. Chris, Christina, Ethan and Corey. Yeah. Super cool people, really nice. Uh we we played with them in Denver and they were yeah. like scorched earth crazy loud. Like they're was, loud. Yeah. And and yeah. she's you know she's like a really nice, really sweet person, and then she gets on stage and she's just like, no, you know, I love it. <laughs> just go nuts, you know. Her voice is just mm-hmm. nuts, and uh, yeah, they're great. They're really really good. Yeah. I'm I'm that I'm glad you dig that because I thought I thought they were really like well, I really awesome like that. Album. And then um like as far as like the albums that you're in, I would say my favorite album that you're in. I'm gonna chop and block. Let's see which one is which one wins. Uh no, but I would say. Billy out. I would say that album. I really was. Whole, I enjoyed that. That too. album's killer. It's Thank great. you so much. Appreciate that. It's yeah, great. I, I, I would say I agree album. with that. Yeah. yeah, we we played most of that the other night on on Monday night, and we were oh yeah, fun. Yeah, we don't have any. You know, our band out. We didn't. We haven't played for like eighteen months, and then we played a show mm-hmm. this week, and it was really, really, really cool. It was great. I was so happy to do it, and I think it inspired me. I, I went home. And I started writing an, an out song, another song. And yeah. assuming my musical partner in that band, Chafe, too. Well, we're all partners in that band, but I assume he's working on stuff, too. So I'm hoping we 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 can make another record soon, you know? Yeah. yeah. I yeah, need say... to figure out how we rock a, a like radio show version of podcasts so we can play some of these cool songs <laughs> and get some attention sure. to these well, like... fun people that are making, like, I just love yeah. the idea of, of, of all of us little people making the cool creative sure. things, you know, doing the yeah. thing for the just for the sake of doing it. 
Yeah. And like I haven't seen out live. Like I've seen Strap Hanger. I saw you back in the glory days when you played the Wishick Gymnasium. One the glory days. I you know. <laughs> Jesus. That was a fun time. <laughs> yeah. It was a good time. And then um what was the band that over the PDC or something like that? Or, yeah, no, yeah. Or yeah and you know what? Weird. Crazy story about those guys, the PDC. I won't tell you what it stands for, but they oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> I I don't know, but I can guess. I'll tell you. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, I, the, the I think that'll player, be fun. Yeah, it's crazy. The guitar player in that band, you know, like I moved away from North Dakota, moved overseas for a little, then I moved to Kalamazoo. And then one day I get a text from my, from Jason Lee, my, you know, my, my buddy in strapping her. And he's like, dude, uh, this, you, that guy, I, again, I'll stay to keep his name off here, but he got, yeah. he got murdered. It was a, uh, a, a like, um, love triangle thing oh. kind of gone wrong. Uh. And, and it was just like, so my memories of that dude are like me telling him like, no, go to the sales barn and go cow tipping. And like, <laughs> go cow tipping. All right. And then oh they my- went and did that. And it was like, and then they, you know, I was kind of a, I mean, it was a really fun and kind of a drunken night, to be honest. But for and sure. all I mean, some really of the best fun. nights are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, like, so that's my memory of him is like him just like, oh my God, they're, the cows were not asleep, dude, you know? And then, <laughs> you know, and, and then he the like, cows ended, were like, not asleep. Yeah. And, like, and it was like, a, I believe it may, may have made like national news. Like, it was a crazy deal, you know? So, yeah. You know? That's insane. Well, and then- like I've seen, like I've seen Strap Hanger at the aquarium, and then that show, yeah. and then I've seen Wowza oh, yeah. in Bismarck, and like those bands are so different. Like it's just, oh, yeah. yeah, like like you just have a wide array of music. Like you know, but that must be something that at least keeps things interesting for you, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, the I, thing I'm most excited about right now, well, the, the hand turn I'm still come, but I'm I'm going into the studio in January, um, with with Frankie and our friend Beth, and Beth is a uh, kind of experimental tuba player, and oh, and she does like drone tuba music, and we're going into electrical audio in in Chicago. That's uh, Steve nice. Elfie's studio. Um, and we're gonna make a record. And I'm we like we got our days picked and we got the engineer ready. Our friend is doing it, and we're so stoked. And it is mostly improv. Can we schedule a podcast to like talk to you? Like, so like you guys are done at the end of the day, and like you go <laughs> hang out and have dinner, and then you guys jump on Zoom and like give us a rundown of of studio time in the day. No, really, I think that would be fun. Yeah. I'll ask him and see, you know, like, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. It, it, but I'm really, really excited for that. And that doesn't sound anything at all. Like anything I've ever done. Um, mm-hmm. we played a couple of, we played three shows together in August and we've all played together for uh, before, you know, in other configurations, but it was really lovely. In fact, and for mo- for one of the shows, I, I would just drop marbles onto my drums and have contact mics on my drums so when okay. the bubble would hit the drums, it would go, you know, oh, and that's fun. through my pedal board and stuff. And that was really rewarding. That was really rewarding. I mean, it, okay. it maybe stretches the definition of what a person considers to be music at times. But like, I love that because I love the idea of playing, just playing and seeing mm-hmm. what happens, right? Yeah. Like trying yeah. something different, trying something new. That is such a playful, fun thing. Marbles. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Really stoked on that. And then, you well, know, I mean, yeah. Okay. Oh, see, there's a bunch well, of I, I was just going to say, so. as as being drummers, I mean, that's a lot of your early life. You just pick up pencils and you just hit stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> you know I mean? How many times are you just kind of like, you know? I was, yeah. I was telling John mm-hmm. something that I want to do because I was listening to. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was. I don't know. I think it was Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. And I was like, I said. I do like abstract art and messy art. And I was like, I want to do some pour paint. I want to, I don't know if you've seen that, the pour paint that people do for canvases. I want to do yeah. two of them. And yeah. while they're wet, I want to have a bunch of other, like set up like a drum set, blank yeah. canvases and the wet ones and like bang the, the paint brushes on them and then bang them on the, and drum into the music and kind of see like what comes out with like the rhythm that you're going with. Oh, that's the paint brushes. You should like, blue man group stuff. Like just to to make the art and see what happens. Yeah. Like I think that oh, would no. just be fun. 
That sounds yeah. amazing. That sounds amazing. It yeah. would be a mess, but it would be so much fun. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> like, sure. let's set up universe, make it so, so that we have millions of dollars and we can make a super fun YouTube video of all of us, like, making drum art. It would be great. Totally, yeah. Yep. It would be great. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love the playfulness of that. I think... Sure. I, you know, that's the thing that keeps you young, right? It's it, yeah. doing the things you love and playing and just seeing what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been doing the same stuff basically my whole life. I've always loved music. I've always loved riding my bike. Um, I've always loved <laughs> love know, listening to records. And watching. and do you listen to Queen's Bicycle Race while you ride your bike? I have before, yes. <laughs> because you must, right? It's the, You have to at least a couple times. Of course. It's a great song, yeah. It really yeah. is. Yep. So, yep. So, that's cool. So, yeah. I love it. Extended well, I, adolescence into my 40s. So, yeah. <laughs> and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Let's stretch it into the 80s. Yeah, totally. It'd be great. It'd be great. That is, that's how you make it to that far. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. By having the fun times. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I do. So, I do want to like, sorry, yeah. I, I know that like you're in your office and stuff, so I don't yeah, want to keep sure. you away from your yeah, family for too terrible like... long. Cool. I think they're going to lock up soon, so I do got to go in a bit. But, oh, yeah. shoot. Okay. okay. I was just going to say, do We're you have anything to get you want locked to plug? In. Yeah, anything do you, you have... want to plug at oh, all? Like, anything coming up, like album wise, anything? Um, really? Album wise, you know, I, I mean, in terms of records that are out right now, I mean, I had a super busy year with records. I made, uh, we made a Kalamazoo Drone Society record and then the New Standards Men record came out. Uh, there was a Wowza yep. EP. I made a record with my friend Susie uh, called uh, Majority Haircut. And mm -hmm. I really like that okay. record a lot too. <laughs> well, and, we, we'll put them, uh, we'll share them all out again. I think I have, if you have new links, send them so that we can share no, everything. It's the same as that. Like the, we're just waiting on the hand <laughs> record to get mastered. And then um, and then, you know, start, it's almost like every year we start the cycle over again. I'm going to do this uh, record in January. And then Frankie and I are already talking about the next hand turner record. I think it might be a double drum album. So oh, you know, fun. We're, we're stoked on, on some of that, <clears throat> stuff, you know? So yeah, we've been, we're really, we're super lucky to, to, I mean, it, again, it's not like, you know, there are tons of people beating down our door to listen to this stuff. But <laughs> yeah, I there will be. You we're know, you know, you we're going to create that, so. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's John so and I are manifesting that we will become rich so that we can help all of our friends. <laughs> oh, that's great. And thank you. I love talking to you guys because it's so nice to talk to people from back home. And uh, yeah, oh, like, yeah. I, I do miss, I mean, you know, sometimes I have a strained relationship with North Dakota, um, but oh. I do, I do mm -hmm. miss it though. And I miss, you know, I'm obviously, you, know, you know, always so close to the whole cultures and stuff. So yeah. don't we yeah, all have sure. a strained relationship with wherever we grew up, right? <laughs> it's just yeah. kind of how it is. I We're know. so happy to have you here. Thanks so much for that joining us again. I am, you guys. I am absolutely not kidding about the meditation stuff, the drumming and, and, the, and the radio show. We're going to, you're just yeah. going to get looped into a bunch of our fun stuff. <laughs> All right. It's so yeah. re real sorry, but you're just, you're stuck with us now. That's, I'm, I'm happy to be. So that's nice. Yeah. For sure. Well, thank you so much Ike, for being with thank us. I, I have been Haley. I'm Johnny. Uh, and, I'm Ike. And this has been Johnny. Johnny. Haley. Haley. Ike. Day, Day of, of fun. 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 Okay. <laughs> You'll get it. Don't worry. Once we'll we blow it. up real I big, everybody will get it. So no, it's it's rehearsed. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Okay. We kind of <laughs> like springing it on people because it's a little bit fun. Oh, yeah. Good. We like the deer in the headlights look. It's fun. Oh, yeah. that's great. Cool. It is. It's enjoyable. So thank you all for listening. And do please go check out all the links below. So check out Ike and all his awesome music. Go check out our Patreon patreon.com slash johnny haley d-o-f and support our stuff so that we can have more awesome people come on and and do playful fun things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peace, y'all. Thank you. Thank you.